Okay, uh, so thank you for being there. Uh, I was not expecting that many people, and I, when I saw the queue, it was just wow. Okay, so um, uh, I have just 30 minutes, so just pretty quick. Um, I'm going to talk you about security, more about authentication, identity management with Keycloak. Uh, just a few words about myself. I'm um, Sebastian Blanc. I'm half French, half Dutch, so Belgium is some kind of my natural country. No, I'm joking. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to follow my tools. Uh, I work for Red Hat for now five years, and I'm working on the Keycloak project. And uh, what is Keycloak? So, in I do, you, I do hear the short version of my presentation because I want to show you the demo, which is the most exciting part, of course. But usually, uh, doing security, adding authentication to your apps is painful. And, but you have no choice. There will be a moment in your, in your project that you will have to implement authentication. Uh, you have to manage your users, the identities, and you will do it in a wrong way. I can tell you that. So, why not delegate your security? That's what Kim does. You know, she delegates her security to this uh, really nice bodyguard. He has been fired since, I think. But, uh, <laughs> but that is exactly what Keycloak is. Keycloak, Keycloak is a server that will take care for you of all your authentication, identity management, and authorization stuff. I've, uh, yeah, that's the, the pitch. So, uh, but a picture is always the best explanation. So imagine Keycloak. Keycloak, you would give him a room. That's a really hard word to say to me. I say territory. You give him a territory to secure. And on this territory, you have different applications. So let's imagine this island. That's our territory that Keycloak will secure. And we have different cities there. In the north, we have GEE land. No, no one wants to go there anymore. We're not sure why. On the contrary, on the seaside, we have Angular land. Wow, that's the place to go. Everyone wants to go there. We have microservices land, not sure what is happening there. And of course, the king of the world, no GS land. And you arrive with your boat and you navigate to Angular land. So imagine you open your browser and you navigate to your Angular app. You arrive there and, yeah, border control. Say, hey, Mr. Sebastian Blanc, you are not uh, authenticated. Please go to the Keycloak Island to get authenticated. And you get redirected. Basically, you get an HTTP redirect to the Keycloak server. And what happens there? Well, you, here you are on the Keycloak server. You enter your credentials. And if everything is OK, just like at Customs, you get a stamp. <laughs> and what is this stamp exactly? Well, it's not just a randomly generated token. Sorry, let me just put it back here. Yeah. It's not a randomly uh, generated token, it's more than that. It's a JWT. I don't know why we say JWT. It's so uh, uh, JWT for JSON what token. So, what is this token? Well, it's a self-contained token. We say that to, to mean that the token itself contains payload. And it's signed, so it can be verified. Really quickly, how does this token look like? You always have a header specifying which algorithm you use for the signature, which type of, of uh, token it is, in this case a JOT. The really important uh, part are the claims. The claims is really the payload of your token. There are some mandatory fields in there, but you can also add whatever custom payload um, 
that you want. Okay? And then the last part is the signature. How does it work with Keycloak? Keycloak has a key pair, private key, public key. He will use his private key to sign the token. Um, and we will see the, the apps talking with Keycloak that receive this token will use their public key to verify the signature. So once that's done, it's compressed. That's how a token looks like. You can see the header, the claims, and signature are separated by a dot. And yeah, that's what I said. Uh, imagine um, uh, a backend app, a REST app. You receive a request from a front-end app, and in the request there's a token. Well, he will first, if it's the first time, he will retrieve the public key from the Keycloak server, and then he will use this public key to verify the signature of the token, to see if the token is valid or not. <coughs> so, I'm just checking the time because... You have some time. Oh, yeah, I'm... I have a lot of time, okay. Um, so that is what basically Keycloak is. Um, Keycloak, of course, is an is a open source project. Everything that I will show you here is open source. And that means that you can uh, contribute. And so if you want to contribute to documentation or doing some bug fixes, or you have a crazy feature in mind, if you make a nice pull request, with the ticket, with test, and everything, and documentation. Well, if it works well, and if it fits a use case for everyone, we will just chip it in the next release. So please do it. Um, so protocols, we uh, try to push forward Open ID Connect. That's uh, our default uh, protocol. But of course, we know that a lot of people are still on SAML 2. So we also support SAML2, and uh, we support uh, Kerberos as well. Social login brokering, that means if you want your users to use their Twitter, Facebook, Git, GitHub account, whatever, OpenID account, they can just use it. I will show you that in the demo. It's just a matter of checking some boxes, enter your credentials of your Twitter app, for instance, and you have the brokering in place. User federation, that means that um, you're in your company or organization, you probably have an LDAP, an active directory. Well, the nice thing is that Kiklo can bridge with this LDAP. Uh, that means that you can use your LDAP credentials through the Kiklo system. And we have a different ways of of managing that, we, you, we can have a full sync. That means that each time that a user is created in LDAP, we also create it in uh, Keycloak. Uh, we have a read-only <laughs> mode. That means we only do brokering. We just read uh, the credentials from uh, LDAP. Um, we have, of course, single sign-on. That means that um, in your browser, if you connect to one app of your realm, and you open an other tab and you connect to another app from the same realm, you won't have to log in again, okay? And in the same way, we have single sign out. That means if you log out from one app, you will be logged out from all your other apps. Um, so we offer quite a lot of stuff, but if you have really a particular use case in your company, particular type of authentication or a really weird way of, uh, of user uh, storage. Well, we offer SPIs. That means that you can easily extend Keycloak to fit your needs. Uh, we provide a whole set of examples. For instance, for user federation, we show you how you can uh, read users from a text file. Stupid, but yeah. It's just to show you how to implement all these classes to add your own uh, user federation. Um, user account management is another nice one. Is 
that is uh, a set of pages that we give to the user that is authenticated, where he can manage his profile. So basically it's a link and you are redirected back to Kiklo, but it's a page for the user where he can update his email, reset his password, change his user details, stuff like that. Um, more than that, uh, speaking, I was telling you about the public key uh, that the apps have to retrieve. In the first version of uh, Keycloak, this public key had to be coded, um, had, had to be hard coded, sorry, in the application. It was fixed. Uh, since a few releases, uh, we have now key rotations. That means that um, the app doesn't need to know the public key, it, it, it can just ask for the key to Keycloak. We have stuff like brute force detection that you can enable, uh, you can fine tune that. Um, one time password, that's <laughs> another one, really nice, so if you want to add some extra security to your authentication process, you want to uh, add OTP, one time password, well, it's just a matter of checking a box and then you will be able to use your free OTP or Google Authenticator as extra step for your authentication. Um, beside authentication, we also have a whole layer of authorization, which is not exactly the same thing. Uh, I could probably spend two hours speaking to you about authorization. Uh, but yeah, that's not really the point of this uh, talk today. But you know, we have it and we are currently pushing, uh, you know, probably for authorization, the, the protocol UMA 2.0. Um, so we should be UMA 2.0 compliant in a few weeks. Okay, that's that for the slides. Uh, just to mention, we are Open ID certified. Uh, and nice thing, I don't know if you know the, the tech radar from Fofworks. That's also a really hard word to say for a French guy, Fofworks. Um, and we were really happy in the team because uh, we entered the radar and uh, we are progressing in the radar. And that's a really good sign. Um, on the community side, uh, so Keycloak is almost four years old, and since last year, you can really feel a boom in the community. Uh, I can see that on the, um, on the mailing list, uh, uh, in conferences, you can see it with the pull request we get. So the community is really booming, and that's really great to be part of such a project. Okay, so um, now I just want to show you basically how Keycloak works in Will. So, assuming you never did anything with Keycloak, where do you start, how do you set it up, etc. Uh, since it's a short presentation, I won't do a lot of live coding. I have apps already there, uh, just to show you how these apps can connect with Keycloak. So if you want to play with Keycloak, the best place to go is at keycloak.org and there I have no internet, okay, uh, let me just, I don't know if I need internet, but anyway, is there FastDem? Oh, no, FastDem, oh. Good luck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck? Oh, it's not really, okay. It's not. It's not, okay. It should be okay because uh, I don't really need it. I have already downloaded it, as you can imagine. You download the server, it's zip, you unzip it whatever, wherever you want, and you start it. It's what I did this uh, morning. I unzip my Keycloak distribution, and then I just have a command to launch it. Here I just give an extra parameter to have a port offset, because otherwise it will conflict with my other apps that I will be running. So basically Keycloak, uh, under the hood, it's a Wildfly, so I don't know if you know Wildfly, Wildfly's application server from, uh, from Red Hat as well. Uh, and it's a naked Wildfly that we wrapped with uh, the Keycloak functionality. 
So my server is running here and then I can uh, go there. And since it's the really first time I connect to my server, I have to create an uh, admin user. So let's create a really secure admin admin user. Here we go. And now I can go to my uh, key cloak. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird bug from Chrome. Sorry. It's really confusing. And I'm the only one in the team having this bug. So, <laughs> Fedora. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that's my Keycloak console. That's here where I uh, manage all my realms, my users, my walls, my clients. So, what is a client for Keycloak? A client for Keycloak is any app that you will secure. It could be a web app, could be a backend app, whatever. For Keycloak, it's called a client, okay? So uh, let's just create a new realm, and let's call it uh, Fastem. Okay, I have my new realm, and here I will start by uh, creating a new client. And um, the demo I'm going to show you is a really nice app called the product app. It's an app where you can see products, awesome. And I just save that. I can keep here all the defaults. Uh, here you can see, uh, for instance, the client protocol is OpenID Connect. I could switch to uh, SAML, but no, let's have fun. Let's, let's stick to OpenID. It's a public client, okay. And the only mandatory field I have to fill here is the uh, redirect re URI. That means that my app, uh, when it will be redirected to Keycloak, it has to be redirected <coughs> back once it's logged in. And I have to add here my URL of my app. <laughs> so my app will be running probably a port 8080, and that's it. Okay, uh, let's create an, sorry, let's create a wall. Let's call it user, a wall user, okay. And I need a user. So let's add a user. Let's call it Sebi, that's my nickname. I save it. By default, I don't have any credentials. So I have to create some uh, default, some first credentials here. So here I create a Sebi Sebi, and I can keep that. That If I leave that temporarily, the first time that I log in, I will have to uh, change my password. Uh, but for demo here, I just switch that off. I change my password. And the last thing I have to do is to assign the wall that I created to Sebi. So now I have the wall user, okay? And I'm, I'm done. Now I can start, uh, now I can connect my app to Keycloak. How does that work? So um, I forgot to mention you, um, Keycloak, we have the server, and then of course for the application we have libraries, we call that adapters which are small libraries that you have to install in your apps to be able to speak with Keycloak, to uh, verify the signature, doing the redirect. So we have adapters for almost all the Java uh, application server, uh, Wildfly, EAP, for all the server containers, Tomcat, Jetty. Um, we have a Node.js uh, library, we have a, a JavaScript library for the front end. Um, and we also have a Spring Boot uh, adapter, and that is what I'm going to show you. Uh, it's not this app. So basically, I have my product app, which is a simple Spring Boot app, uh, really simple MVC app. I have a landing page. It's my public page with a link to my product. And what is my product? My product is just a template uh, that will list the products that are retrieved here in my controller. Where are the products coming from? So that is a second app, which is running here. It's just a, a REST app. Let, uh, let me just... Ooh. It's a really simple app, as you can see. That's, that's only that. It's in Kotlin, just to have a bit more fun. Uh, here I just expose uh, this path, products, and uh, when this, 
REST endpoint is called, it retrieves a list of products, okay? And so my, my app here retrieves these products and puts it in the model and they are shown. Okay, that are two, uh, so we have two apps here. Um, and what do I need to do to, to get it connected with uh, Keycloak? Um, well, since here it's a, it's a Spring Boot app, uh, it's pretty simple, all I have to do. Uh, let me see, and now I'm start to, oh here, sorry, this part. The dependency, that's, that's just one dependency that you have to add to your app and it will be uh, Keycloak compliant. Then of course you need to configure your app to be able to speak with Keycloak. Where does that happen? In a Spring Boot app, that happens in the properties file. And here, uh, let me see. Sorry, oh, oh, come on. Okay, you can see it. It's here, uh, the really important one is this one. <coughs> I tell him where is Keycloak running, okay? Uh, what is the wheel? So that's a good point that I show you that because we have to change that. It's FOSDEM. Uh, the resource is the name of my client here, it's the product app, and it's a public client, okay? And uh, it's a Spring Boot app, I'm using here Spring Security. Um, I don't have too much time to explain you how Spring Security works, but just uh, our adapter makes it possible to combine Spring Security and Keycloak. And the important part here is just uh, with Spring Security what you always do is you have to create a security config class. Uh, that's what I do here. But the important part here is that I uh, have this matcher here. Say uh, any request to products must be authenticated and the user must have the role user, okay? Um, and if we take a quick look at the REST app, same here. Um, <coughs> here I'm not using uh, Spring Security. Here I'm just secure, securing the, the, sorry, the servlet container that is wrapped with my Spring Boot app. In this case it's Tomcat, but it could be Undertow or Jetty. It's supported as well. So the same here, uh, I specify uh, my config. And here, that is basically how I define my, I don't know if you know a bit about Java EE security constraints, uh, Usually you put that in a web.xml file. Here we define it this way. So basically I uh, create a security constraint for the wall user. And the important part here is that I just uh, provide the same pattern. So any call. The realm. The realm. The realm. Thank you. Yeah, wall. Well, yeah. What realm do you support? Well, to be honest, um, he will use, he, he won't use, the, this is a, oh yeah, that's a good point, I can explain you that. That's a bearer, bearer only app, that means that there will be no redirect from this app because uh, it makes no sense, it's always an other app calling this app, so it makes no sense, there's no human uh, behind it, so it makes no sense to redirect to a login screen. So it only accepts calls that contains a token, otherwise it will just return a uh, 403. Um, and to be honest, yeah, here I could remove the realm here because he won't use the realm. The only thing he will use is this to be able to retrieve the five minutes left. Wow, okay. <laughs> so let me just launch it because five minutes left. Um, do, 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 do. Wow, that was fast. Let me run the app. I run my backend app. Okay, fortunately it's Spring Boot, it's running pretty fast. I run my front end app. Okay, so uh, is it running? Yeah, it's running. Let me open an uh, incognito window. Uh, let me go to 8080. Okay, here you can see my uh, CSS uh, skills. Impressive landing page. Very uh, very, very modern, yes. That's just my skill uh, Yeah. <laughs> and here, if I click on my products, uh, if the demo gods are with me, I should be, okay. I'm redirected to Keycloak, <laughs> you see? 
And so here I'm on the key cloak side and here I can use my credentials. And I'm logged in and two things happen here. So I'm logged in and my app made another request to the uh, backend app passing the token in the request. Uh, because if I go to my backend app, which is uh, running on 80, 81, I think, products, you can see here I get an unauthorized. So if, if I just call it, I'm not authorized to, to get it. So um, I can log out. Awesome. Uh, and let me just quickly show you room settings login. Imagine I want uh, it to enable new users to register. I don't want, uh, if I forgot my password, I would like Keycloak to send me an email. I don't <laughs> want to log in over and over again. I just do that. And if I go back to my app here and I, I refresh, now you can see I can register as a new user. You have to remember me, forget password. Uh, same, imagine you, you all have maybe a GitHub account. Uh, here I enter my uh, credentials, I uh, just here, uh, dummy numbers, okay, I save that and again if I go here and that I refresh, now I could be, uh, I could uh, log in with my GitHub account, okay, or any open ID provider, we just provide a set, but if you have your own open ID provider that you want to use, uh, you just enter the URLs. Uh, I'm undone, or... Have I one minute left? We have three minutes for questions. Okay, because, okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, I was about to show you how to secure uh, a front-end app, but I'm running out of time. But I think you got the big picture of what Keycloak is. Uh, I will be here the whole day, I think, if I not crash back to my hotel. But <laughs> So if you have any questions, you can ask them now or ask them later if you catch me anywhere. Thank you. Thank you.